Ooh, maybe today is not the best day to be going up all the way up to the workshop to do a video for you, but yeah, we just got to get into the workshop first. Alrighty, here goes. Well, that was fun. All right, we are back in the workshop in this cold, snowy day. And uh, hopefully this will work. I'm using the phone to do this video because I want to be able to pick the phone up and kind of show some different stuff. I've had a couple people asking me about uh, some of the tools and stuff I use or equipment. So um, I'm going to do a short video on a couple of those things today. And um, the phone just makes it a little bit easier to do that. Um, anyways, the, the first thing I want to cover is I had somebody asking me about the headstock on uh, this. This is a jet lathe. And uh, the, the head that I've got on here, I'm, like when I'm turning the wands, I'm using this uh, jaw chuck. And this is, a, uh, I have spigot jaws on this chuck. Uh, and then the chuck, of course, comes off. Um, the, the difference is, is the jaws that I had for this um, did not fit the threads on the headstock. And so I had to buy an adapter that uh, changes, that changes the, um, the size of the thread to the size of the jaws that I have. Um, some of this, some of this stuff equipment is on kind of permanent loan. I had a wonderful lady up here who's a wood artist who had the big lathe um, in a storage building and uh, told me that uh, if I would keep it at my house, so she didn't have to pay storage, that she would let me use it uh, as long as I wanted. And so um, some of the stuff I have is hers. So it's been really great. She's a really great artist um, and I really appreciate it. But uh, it means that I'm having to buy some adapter stuff, but uh, this adapter, um, the first, I did buy a different adapter. The first one I got, it was a cheaper brand um, and also was not hollow, but as you can see, this is hollow all the way through. Uh, and that allows me to, to feed my wand in uh, a little bit deeper. Um, and I, I know the chuck is a Nova chuck um, and the jaws are, are uh, spigot jaws for the Nova chuck. Uh, and this adapter, again, it's really going to depend on what lathe you have and uh, what jaws and stuff that you use. I just got really lucky to, to, that I had to get an adapter and that I found one that was hollow because it actually extended the amount of space that I can put the, the wands up into the chuck. Um, and as you can see, the, the hole in this is not giant. It's probably around five-eighths of an inch of a hole here. Um, the thing is... Um, the, these headstocks are hollow, at, at least on the most of the laves I've seen. They have to be because you, you, the threads are for like your jaws and stuff, but then you have, um, your spur drives, like uh, this is an, a, a Morse taper, a number two Morse taper, an MT2. So, and this slides up in there. Once you chuck this up and it jams in there, this does not come out easily. So you have to be able to eject this, uh, with, with a, an ejector rod and this one. This lathe has an ejector rod that comes with it. And I'll, I'll kind of take, take off the, the phone here so you can see what I'm talking about. But basically, what you've got is, so in order to get this out from this end, this has to be hollow on the back side of, of this drive so this this is part of the drive that rotates and this it, this is hollow through here now the hole gets smaller on this end but it's big enough to allow this rod to go in so when i do the wands so you know if i the, the rod goes in here and you push it forward and, and that is going to eject that spur drive so you hit it from the back side and pops it out um anyways let me get set back up here um but being hollow like that, um, it does mean that to a certain extent, you can feed the wand inside this headstock a certain distance uh, as well. So you can see that the rod comes all the way through here. And this rod is probably closer to three eighths of an inch because like I said, on, on the back side of this, the hole is smaller than right here, right at the threads. So, cause then this is bigger for that taper cause it has to taper down. It's, it's wider here than it is at the end. So it's just how, just how the, the spur drives work on these. Um, and the, it's the same on the tail stock. So, uh, anyway, so that was, that was the question I had about the headstock, uh, and how that works. And I just, I'm using that hollow to my advantage. Uh, it just happened to be that most of the wands that I turned down are again, about the size of a Sharpie at the, on the blade. 
Um, and that's so that they fit in my, so, you know, this is, this almost fits in that hole. By the time you taper it down to a smaller point, you can get quite a bit of that wand up inside here. So, uh, I don't know if that helps uh, the person that was asking about it, but um, that's what I, that's how I do it. Uh, somebody else asked about the steady rest. So I want to talk a little bit about the one that I've got. My likes and dislikes. The reason that I got this, so this came as a kit, uh, and this thing is made to fit different, um, different lathes. So I don't know if you can see here, but each one of these sections, these, these are different. This, there's two risers under here. So that if, if you have a lathe, the distance between the spindle and the bed here uh, is different on, depending on the size of lathe that you have. So this one is made to fit different sizes and it had these different risers. Um, and they're a real pain in the butt to deal with. I actually just put some super glue in between mine because I have to use both of the risers on here in order to, to get it high enough to, to sit up uh, in the middle uh, so that uh, it comes through these bearings right so it's and it's all cast iron so that's the first problem is it, it's super heavy and these little parts um, when they're loose are a pain to deal with um, it did come with two different so you can see this is the part right here that goes onto uh, underneath um, the bed here and the uh, it came with two different threaded two different size pieces um, depending on the lathe and of course again I have the big one so the small one doesn't fit um, but then they have this bolt and this bolt is you know again you can see it's really long and of course since I had these glued in I can't even get the bolt in and out um, I had to put the bolt in to glue it so that um, I could get the bolt back in and it, it just uses this big giant bolt to tighten down, which is a real pain in the butt. Um, you know, and then, it, and then that just clamps down. You, you slide this on the threads on the bottom side and then you tighten it from the top. But the thing is, is that this bolt is a, like an 11 16 bolt, which is, you know, I mean, or one and one sixteenth. sorry, not 11 16 uh, one and one sixteenth. It's, it's bigger than a one inch and most people, I mean, we're now we're looking at tractor wrenches because that's such a huge bolt to try to tighten down. So the other thing is, is when you're trying to tighten this, as you can see, I've got this big tractor wrench and now everything is in the way here. So I have to slide all of my headstock and stuff way back in order to get in here to be able to tighten this up a little bit. And, you know, you don't need a giant wrench. It doesn't have to be torqued on there like, you know, your tractor stuff does. So, really, I'm not even putting that much torque on it. But I still have to use the wrench because it's the only one I have with a big enough head to fit this bolt. So, again, the design of this thing is not so, not so good. Uh, it, it, it's, all, it's all cast iron. Uh, and you can see, it, you know, it, it, it's... Where the where the casting and stuff is rough right here. Um, it's not not really it, it was inexpensive. I'll say that the reason that I got it is because it had these little tiny bearings The whole reason I bought this thing is because of these tiny bearings and As you can see this is this is I like I've seen these really big at, for doing like bowls and stuff like that and that's great and all, but when I'm, I'm doing wands, you know, they're this big around. So I, I needed something that had small wheels on it. And it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I, I, I was at um, the Woodcraft store to, when I picked this up. And they, you know, they had this in stock so I could take it home. And I, I got a little bit over anxious. So it was a little bit of an impulse buy. And once I got it home and found all of the things that I don't like about it, <clears throat> if I had it to do over again, I think I'd do a little bit more research. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is it does the job, um, you know, being able to, uh, you know, adjust these uh, up to touch the, the little spindles that I'm putting in here on three sides uh, without all three wheels touching. That was the main thing. So while it's inconvenient to use and if I just done a little bit more research and, you um, you know, thought about it more, I would have bought something different. Uh, I'm telling you all the problems that I have with this particular model. So if you're going to buy one, you can consider that. 
Uh, it, I would see if I would I could find one that has a better attachment set up um, and possibly even find one that is specific to your uh, the height of your spindle uh, to the bed. Um, because they, like I said, they do come in different sizes. This one was set up to fit multiple sizes. So anytime that you have one that's multifunctional, uh, you, you end up having the headache of dealing with all the extra pieces and stuff with it. So if you can find one that's specifically made for whatever your bed measurement is, then I think you're going to be better off. Um, the main thing, if you're doing wands, uh, the, the main thing that you want to do is to the, try to find one that has um, small uh, wheels of some kind. Um, the, uh, the other downside about doing these with these metal bearings, the metal does kind of... Um, it, it can leave marks on the wood. Uh, you can kind of alleviate that by putting a little piece of painter's tape around the wand before you tighten these down. And you're not tight, you're not clamping it. Um, but it, you know, um, for me, I just try to do use this before I do my final sanding and the marks are never um, deep enough that I can't sand them out. Um, but you can put painter's tape on there. But anyways, that's, that's the main thing, um, you know, with this is, you know, just having the three, the three small wheels on this, um, and if you can find one that is made for your lathe height uh, that fits and something, uh, some sort of a better attachment, then it, because I have no option to put, I would have rather it, this been threaded at the top and the bolt go through this freely because then I could have tightened it from the bottom. But as it is, the, the bottom piece that's the clamp is threaded, so you have to use this with this long bolt. Um, I, I may see if I can find a shorter bolt or something. So those are things, at least a few things that I noticed with this particular model uh, that you might want to consider if you're going to get one for yourself. Um, and it also kind of depends on how much you're going to use it. Like I said, I don't use this a whole lot. Um, it would help if I was not, if you're not able to feed your wand up into the jaws as deeply as I do then and you have a really long skinny piece you can use this to kind of help anytime you have you know a wand and you're trying to cut it you're going to get that it's going to flex the the wand shaft is going to flex when you're cutting on it and the more wand you have sticking out in the open the more it's going to flex and the more chance that you have of a catch uh in a gouge or straight up breaking the wand on there uh, and a steady rest will help that. Um, you just have to remember that when you're working on it, this also sticks out in the way and you're not gonna be able to get your tool handles and stuff at, at some angles. It's gotta be far enough away from your work that you can still work without it being in the way, but close enough that it supports um, the, the spindle, that, whatever spindle that you're working on. If, if you're working thin, um, like for wand making, then I, like I do. So anyways, those were the two main things that uh, people asked me about. Um, I can do another video later on if, if y'all have questions about some of the other tools or techniques that I use. I was kind of thinking about doing a um, video on coloring wood, different, different methods to color the wood. Uh, so if you'd like to see that, uh, please give me a, a thumbs up on this one and give me a comment and let me know, if it, you know what kind of things that you'd like to see me talk about, um, you know, process, you know, things that I do or how I do certain things. Um, that might help you out if you're making wands as well. Anyways, uh, make sure you subscribe for more. Uh, I'll have some more wand making videos and who knows what all else coming up uh, in the future. So uh, you, if you subscribe, you'll definitely get a note, you hit the bell and you'll get a notification when I posted something new. And as always, thanks for watching.